Hello everyone, my name is Monica. This is Unity Yoga and Pilates. Um, today we will be working, uh, we'll be, be doing a half of vinyasa practice with some Pilates kind of infused. So I don't know if I would call this a yoga Pilates fusion class, um, yoga lattes, but we'll definitely be doing some Pilates because today's practice is going to really focus on the core. We're going to be working the abdominal muscles, um, the gluteal muscles, and the legs here in the quadriceps. Uh, just before this, I posted a video that was from the tutorial on protecting your knees. Um, and I encourage you to watch that, especially if you're newer or if you've been practicing for a long time as a good reminder, because a lot of the work that we're doing today will have those knees in flexion, and I want to make sure you're protecting them. Um, as always, modify as you need to. Anyone who is pregnant, um, particularly second or third trimester, you really want to avoid a lot of abdominal work. So. Um, for the most part, this is not going to be the best practice for you, but if you already have a regular practice, you can certainly continue just avoid any of the twists and any of the contractions that we do in the abdominals, and also you don't want to be on your bellies. Um, and I think that's it. So go ahead and come down to your backs to start today. Flat on your backs, knees bent. So our knees are about hips distance apart, so our thighs are parallel, shins feet are parallel, shoulders are down on the mat, shoulders are rolling down and back, palms are pressed down on the mat. And just from here, give yourself a few moments, just connect to the mat, taking a deep bend up through the nose, open your mouth and let it go. And again, deep inhalation, and let it go. And now just relax for a moment. Your eyes can be open or they can be closed. Connecting with the breath. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the nose. As you exhale, releasing any stress, releasing any tension. Letting the shoulders relax. Letting the facial muscles relax. Finding that steady pattern. Inhaling. Letting go of anything not serving you in the moment, being present here in your, on your mat, in your practice. And from here, take a deep inhale, stretch your arms overhead, stretch your legs below. Again, if you want to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out, you can. And then draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little hug and a little rock from side to side. And let's go ahead and place your feet right back where they just were. So feet on the mat. Good. So I want to take a moment to connect here to our pelvic girdle. It's going to be really important as we do our abdominal work that we're not working our back when we don't want to be. We're straining it that we're working our abs. So when you think about your pelvis, and I want you to think about tilting your pelvis down, which is going to put this big arch in your back. And then tilting your pelvis up without lifting your hips, which is going to press your back flat to the mat. So just do a few rocks here. We're not lifting. We're just rocking forward and backwards. Feeling what that feels like, what you're doing with your hips. As you tilt the hips up, pull the belly button towards the spine. Press the back into the mat. That's going to give you a neutral position that we'll be working in later. From here, we're going to add to this, beginning to lift the hips using the breath. So next time you inhale, tilt the pelvis up, and then continue lifting, 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 so you come all the way to shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, pull the belly button in towards the spine, and roll down one vertebra at a time. So do that a few more times with your own breath, inhaling, and exhaling. faster or slower than me, that's absolutely fine. Your breath, your movement. If you would like, you can begin to warm up the shoulders, adding some arm movement into this, if you prefer. 
arms back beside you. If you need to, bring the feet a little bit closer to your body for more support. Roll those sh shoulders really under your body so you're really lifting the hips. And the pelvis up, start with the motor side, knees and your thigh. Pulling the belly button towards the spine, shoulders rolling down and back. And notice my knees aren't flaring open or collapsing together. I'm using the glutes to keep them here. From here, I want you to make little tiny squeezes, little pulses up. So notice it's not a gigantic movement. I'm not dropping all the way down here. It's as high as I can go and then just squeezing that little teeny bit higher. So I'm going to add to this. These are all optional additions to make this more challenging. You can just stay right here if you'd like. If you'd like to make it more challenging, we're going to lift up on our left toes. So our left heel is up in the air or on the ball of our foot. If you'd like to take this a little bit more, you're going to come to a, a tabletop position with that left leg. So you're pulsing your knee towards the ceiling. And if you'd like a further challenge, you can extend that leg long. So you're pulsing your toe towards the ceiling. So now most of the work is happening here in our right hand side. Lifting up. Up, up and pause, lower the leg down towards the horizon, just coming to the knee and pull it back up. Two more times, lowering down and pulling back up. Last time down, pulling back up, then bending that knee, placing it down the mat. Continuing with the pulsing as now we're going to lift up with the opposite foot. So you're on the right ball of your right foot, heel is off the mat, and continuing to pulse. And then again, same options here. If you did it on the left, do it on the right. But if you did not, you can just stay right here. You can come to tabletop, knee towards the ceiling, or you can extend that leg all the way up, pushing up. And again, notice it's a small movement. I'm not dropping low. I'm pressing up, up, up. And pause, lower the leg down, and bring it back up. Notice it's with control. I'm not there's no momentum. Last time down and up. Place it on the mat and pull the belly button and roll all, all, all the way down. You're going to separate your feet, that mat so six apart, and then just move your legs from side to side. Windshield wipers. I like to think about this as. Good. Let them go down to the left. Turn your head, look over your right. For a couple of breaths and a little twist, this releases that low back in case you were feeling any stress or tension there. Up through center, over to the other side, looking over the opposite shoulder. Good. Come back up to center, hug the knees into the chest, and give yourself a little rock. So we're going to do a couple things here that are definitely part of the Pilates series. But again, they're based in yoga posture. So this is a leg stretch series. Um, you've done this with me before if you've done my videos. And they're also super common in Pilates. I love them because they all work, are going to help increase flexibility in our legs as well as working our abdominal muscles. So we're going to lift up into a tiny ball. We're going to pull the right knee in. We're going to pull out the right ankle and below the right knee. Lift that left leg up out of the mat and then you can lower that leg down as much as you want without arching your back. Inhaling on the right, exhaling on the left. In Pilates we exhale through our mouth but it's up to you if you want to just continue exhaling through your nose since I have promised you a yoga practice today. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. Last time, this time hold the right leg in for a breath. Continue to hold, chin towards chest, we're not arching our head up. Good, switching sides, hold the left leg in, stretch that right leg long. Again, the right leg can be lifted if it's too difficult down here. Gently pulling that leg in, doing that single leg stretch, it's great for digestion. Good, have both knees in, holding on to shins. Extend, arms up, legs up, or we're challenging out. Exhale to a tiny ball. Inhale, extend, back is not arching. Exhale. If your back arches off the mat, pull your legs up higher. Exhale. Belly button towards the spine, your abs should be feeling this. 
Last time, we're going to extend and hold. Good. Notice my arms are straight up. I tend not to bring them back because that tends to pull the back off the mat. Keep the low back in. We're going to continue. If you need a break, you can put your legs down. Otherwise, bring the right leg in. Switch. Bring the left leg in. Keeping the legs nice and straight. Once again, chin towards chest. We're looking at our thighs. We're not arching our head back. Inhaling on one side. Exhaling on the other. Good. Next time, we're going to hold the leg in. So right leg comes in. Pulling it towards the body. Stretching that left leg away from us. If you want, roll that right ankle a couple of times. Continuing to pull the belly button towards the spine. Chin to chest. And switch, gently pulling the left leg in, gently rolling that left ankle if you'd like. Remember you're holding calf or ankle, try not to hold knee, or you can hold thigh. If you're down here, we're holding your thigh, right? Never our knee. Both legs come up, hands behind the head. The modification for this is going to be hands under the body, head on the mat. More challenging, arms are wide, cradling the head, flex the feet, inhale to lower down. Exhale to pull back up. Inhale, not going any lower than you can go, keeping the back pressed into the mat. If your back arches, you will hurt your back and you won't be working your abdominals. One last time, lowering down, pulling back up, and hug the knees into the chest, release down. That series can be done with breaks in between. It's more advanced to do like we just did, so feel free to take breaks if you need. Feel free to put your head down if you need. Coming back to the bridge for a moment, lifting up, coming to a deeper bridge. If you'd like, bring your hands behind your body. Press those hips up high. Take a deep inhale. Expand your stomach. One last time, inhaling. Release the hands and lower yourself all the way down. Hugging knees into your chest. Begin to rock a little bit forward and backward. And then begin to rock all the way up. Pulling the belly button in so you're really rounded here. You're not smacking down onto the mat. And then we're going to come to tabletop position. So you're going to roll up, cross your legs if you want, or swing them behind you, and come to hands and knees. Okay? So on hands and knees, our knees are right under our hips. Our hands are right under our shoulders. Warming up a little bit here with cow-cat. Inhaling. Pelvis comes down. Chest and head lift. Arching up. Inhaling, just warming up that spine. Abs. One last time. Inhaling, notice the pelvis position here. Notice the arch in the back. Abs. Arching up. Now find the neutral position. So this is not neutral, but we're in cat. Neither is this in cow. Find the position in the middle. So your belly button has to pull towards the spine and your back is more or less flat. Palms are spread to give yourself a nice space. We're going to do the knee and the arm like we sometimes do in cow cat, but rather than arching the back like we often do, I want you to keep the back stable. Imagine you have a glass balancing on your back and I don't want it to move. So the movement of your arm and leg might not be as much. Go ahead and join me. Exhaling, pulling in. Inhaling to extend. You're looking right down at the mat. Once you're done looking at me, you know what we're doing. But you're keeping the back stable. That's working your abdominal muscles. So you're crunching in using your core. One last time. Holding out on the extension. Extend the arm, extend the leg. From here, tap your toe down to the mat and lift it back up. Tap it down. Just a hip height. We're not kicking high. Working our core here nice and slow and controlled. Back to hip height and give you little teeny circles. Moving that leg in one direction. And then reversing, moving in the other direction. Good. Extending, coming out to the side, arm away from the shoulder, leg out from the hip. Notice what happens here. Keep pulling the belly button in. Keep trying to keep that back in neutral. Tap the foot down and back up. Down and back up. Good. We'll see my blocks in my way. And up. Last time. And up. Good. Back to center. Bringing the hand to the mat. See if you can keep the leg extended. We're going to do tricep push-ups from here. Our elbows bend beside our body, and our chest comes down towards the mat, and then we press back up. Inhaling as you 
lower down. Exhale to come back up. Maybe you don't go all the way to the mat, that's fine, but your body just tilts downwards. One of my instructor friends calls this a seesaw. You're just tilting down and tilting back. Good. We're going to curl that left toe under us and push up into a high three-legged down dog. Pressing that leg away from us. Opening the hip here, bending the right knee, stacking right hip on top of left. And from here, bend and extend the leg. Extend it out. Bend it in. Extend and bend. Two more times. Stretching it long. Pulling it in last time. Pulling it in. And then bringing it to center. Placing it on the floor, dropping to our knees and stretching back for a moment in our child's pose with knees together so that you can round over your knees, stretching out your back just for a couple of breaths. Good, bring it back up. Same thing on the other side. So hands are on your shoulders, knees under hips, finding that neutral spine. Belly button pulling in. We're going to extend the left leg and the right arm, and then we're going to draw them in towards one another, and then extend. The idea here is to move the limbs without moving the torso. Can you crunch in, stabilizing the back? Inhale to extend, exhale to pull in. Last time on the extension, we're going to hold this. Arm reaches long, leg reaches long. Tap down and lift. Almost to the floor, or you can actually touch the floor, but just back up to hip height. Three, and two. Last one, and then can you make little circles? The smaller the circle here, the better. This isn't a giant circle, it's a little circle. And can you reverse? Pause. Arm out to the side, leg out to the side. Try not to shift. It's easy to shift over or over. Stay in the center and tap and lift. Tap and lift. Pretty small movement, depending on your flexibility. Last time, back to center. Hand comes down, scorpion push ups, palms are wide. Dipping down, maybe you just come to here, maybe you all almost kissing the mat. Elbows brush the rib cage. Try not to let them pop out to the side. And three. And two. Last one, pressing up, curling the toes under, pushing all the way up and back, three-legged down dog, bending that leg, stacking your hips. Extend and pull it in. Extend. And in three more times, stretching long and contracting. Good. Last one. Back to center. Place that foot down. Staying here in your down dog for a moment. Separate your legs wide, about mass distance apart. Mats are a little bit less, but just not too close together. A little wider than hips distance. Bend the knees towards the mat and then stretch them away. And bend. And extend. Exhale. Inhale. Last time, extend. Step the feet to hips distance, really thinking about rolling the shoulders away from the ears. Let's not forget about our uh, upper body just because we're focusing on our lower body. Good, we're going to walk to the top of the mat. Hanging over here for a moment in your forward fold, letting the head go, letting the arms go. Bending the knees, dropping the hips, and rolling yourself up one vertebra at a time. Deep inhalation to extend the arms up. Good, shoulders down and back. Feet coming together, letting that right or left arm rather drop down to the side, stretch the opposite arm over, pushing out through the opposite hip. Taking a couple breaths into the ribs. Inhaling through center, over to the other side, pressing out to that hip. And coming back to center. Good, roll the shoulders down and back. And find yourself at the top of the mat. So feet 
are relatively narrow, just about hips distance, or a little bit more narrow. Really thinking about our core today. So when you're firing on your quads, your glutes, your abs to keep your abs to keep yourself supported. Belly button pulling towards spine, lifted, tall, lengthened spine, hands to heart center. Good. So a few certain namaskars to continue to warm ourselves up. We'll be adding on to these each time. Good. Next inhale, extending up. Exhale, forward fold, long spine. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, release. Inhale, step the right foot back, coming to a low lunge, coming to crescent by releasing the right knee, rising up, hand behind the left knee, hands to heart, or arms can extend, holding here for a moment, lifting the chest towards the ceiling, taking a couple of deep breaths. Caressing forward while still lifting, lifting up. Think about the spine growing tall, lengthening from the tailbone to the top of the head. Good. Hands find the mat, curl the right toes under, step the left foot back, dropping to knees, lower all the way down to the mat. Inhale, slide up to sphinx and hold sphinx for a moment. Shoulders down and back. See if you can pull the belly button away from the spine. Chest long, tall, and proud. Spine long. Breathing, contracting the glutes, protects the low spine. And then release that down, slide the hands back underneath your shoulders, curl your toes under, press up through plank and find yourself in downward facing dog. Bending one knee, bending the other knee. Good, as we did before, extend the right leg, bend it, and then just pause here, opening it up. Right hip on top of left. Come back to center. Leg is lifted high. We're going to add some movement here as we hinge forward to a three-legged plank. So the knee comes to the chest and we hinge all the way forward. And kick back. And again, hinging forward, knee towards chest. And extend. Three more times. The further forward you go out over your hands, the harder this is. Two more times. This time, bring that leg all the way forward, coming to a low lunge, knee over ankle. If you find that you're struggling and you're reaching here, put a couple of blocks here beside your foot so you can lengthen your spine. Press back through that back leg. Take a deep breath. If you're ready to push off into a run. And then go ahead and push off that back foot, bring it to the front. Forward fold, sliding halfway up, flat back. And releasing down, inhale, coming all the way up, directly into your next round. Exhale, hinging forward. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, stepping back with the left foot, releasing that knee down, rising up to your crescent lunge, your low crescent lunge. Hinging forward, opening through the chest. Option to bring the hands to the heart. Option to bring the arms up, lifting the chest towards the sky. Taking a couple of deep breaths here. And finding the mat, hands find the floor, stepping the right foot back, dropping down to knees again, chest comes to the floor, chin comes to the floor, chest comes to the floor, then the hips come up, holding cobra for a moment, so elbows down and back, shoulders down and back, contract the glutes. Can you release the hands and hold yourself up? Good, holding here for a couple of breaths. Back to the mat, curl the toes under, press up and back, downward facing dog. Shoulders away from the ears, slight micro bend in the elbow, extend the left leg, bending that knee, dropping the foot towards the other side, holding here in this open position, knees or hips stacked. And coming back to center, hinging forward, knee comes to chest, coming all the way forward and pause. Extend the leg back up. You can exhale coming forward, inhale to kick back up. Or you can reverse that. You decide what works best for you. Last one. This time stepping that left leg all the way forward, planting the foot down. And coming to your runner's lunge on this side, knee over ankle, long spine. Gaze is kind of forward on this so that you're in a neutral spine from your head down off your back. Taking a couple of 
and then pressing off that right foot, coming to the top of the mat, forward fold, inhale, halfway up, add to release, inhale, rising all the way up, and exhale, hands to heart, round two, inhale, extend, exhale, release down, inhale, halfway up, exhale, release, Stepping the right foot all the way back this time, followed by the left. Your option to do this from knees or do full chaturanga, coming down to the mat and then coming to your upward facing dog. I have a tutorial on this one as well. Curling the toes under, pressing up and back. More challenging option here this time. Extending the leg up, opening up the hip. If you want, you can come down to your wild thing. Left leg is going to extend, right leg is bent, and that arm is lifted. And then if you want, we'll add a movement here, coming down, pressing back up, and release, and up three more times. Again, these are options. You don't need to add the challenge move. You can stay in either of the positions on the way. Pressing up, flipping back over, the leg can stay extended. And we're going to go across our body this time. So bring the knee across to the opposite elbow and kick back up. Hinging forward and kick back up. Three more times. And two. Last one. This time coming to fall in triangle. So that right foot comes all the way out in front of the body. And then we pivot, and you're going to be on the right hand, if that was the right leg going, left leg can come up. I mean, left arm, sorry. Maybe not the left leg. If you want, however, the right leg can come up. Totally optional. I'm shaking. You might be shaking. Maybe you're not. Foot comes down. Hand comes down. Coming back to your downward facing dog. Press through those legs. Good. Stepping the right foot forward, followed by left. Forward fold, inhale halfway up, exhale release, inhale rising all the way up, immediately back down, exhale, inhale halfway up, exhale release, stepping the left foot all the way back, followed by the right, chaturanga, inhale, exhale, pressing back to that down dog, hold your down dog for a moment. Extend the left leg long, bending that left knee. Optional wild thing, dropping it down, right leg extends, pushing the left hip up, and then reaching down towards the mat and pressing up. Again, this is optional. And two. Last one. Lifting up, pivoting over. Extend that left leg coming across the body to the left elbow, or the right elbow, sorry, left knee, right elbow, and two, and three, two more. The last one like this, coming to your fallen triangle, left leg comes across the body, plants down, pivot, right arm comes up, and if you want, left leg lifts up, holding. Good. Placing the hand down, placing the foot down, pressing back to downward facing dog, and then dropping to your knees and coming to child's pose. From child's pose, reach those hands out in front of you, curling your toes under, press yourself up, downward facing dog. Take your breath. Good. Stepping the left leg forward. Followed by the right, forward fold, inhale, sliding halfway up, exhale, release, inhale, rising all the way up, and exhale. Good, this time coming to chair, Utkatasana. Inhale, arms can stay at the heart or they can extend. You're sitting way back, weight is in your heels, knees over ankles, holding here. Make sure you can wiggle your toes, belly button in, spine long. Breathing through it. And next time you exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sliding halfway up. Exhale, release. You can jump back if you'd like to power yoga this, or step right foot follow by left. Exhale, chaturanga, elbows hug the rib the ribcage. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, pressing back. Coming to high lunge, so the right leg is going to come up, swing forward, 
All toes are pointing forward as we rise up. Hands coming to heart for a moment. Get your balance. If you're balanced, you can bring your arms up. Holding here. We're going to add some movement to this. Let the arms release down. Focus on your back leg. Back leg is going to drive down to the mat, bending, while the front knee just goes along for the ride. What we don't want to do is track forward. As we drop down, the arms come up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale. Good. Working the legs, not the knees. We're not coming forward. I can see my toes the entire time. Last time. Good. Coming into that high lunge. So pushing back to that heel, coming as low as you're able, maybe as low as a 90 degree bend. We're going to twist towards the right side, extending the right arm back, left arm forward, and then open this into Exalted Warrior. That back arm drops down towards the leg without putting pressure on it. Left arm comes up. Good. Coming back up. Coming into a twist, hands come to heart center, left elbow to the outside of that thigh, turning towards the ceiling, twisting into this. Option to bring the hand down to the mat for balance. Option to extend the opposite arm. Taking a deep breath here. Hands find the mat. Stepping the right foot back. Option to just go to your down dog. Otherwise, chaturanga. Rising through your up dog. Pressing back through down dog. Other side, coming into your high lunge. Left foot forward. Right heel lifted, rising up. Pushing back through that heel, 90 degree bend at the most here, dropping down, bending that knee towards the mat, and coming back up. You'll notice the front knee bends and straightens a tiny bit, but it's really about the back leg. We are not tracking forward, it's like you're sliding straight up and down a pole. Sorry, there's dogs marking now, so city life, right? Good, coming up, pressing through that back heel, arms extend, no more than a 90 degree bend out front. Lifting, 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 now twisting towards that left leg. Right arm shoots forward, left arm shoots back. Exalted warrior, left arm drops down. Right arm comes up, breathing into the ribs. Bringing the hands to the heart, coming to a low twist. Elbow comes against the outside of that thigh, looking up towards the ceiling. And again, if you want to, the hand can find the mat, the arm can extend. I don't know that either is easier or harder. You're kind of more stable here. But this one's nice too. Hands find the mat, stepping that left foot back, chaturanga. Inhaling up, exhaling down dog. Pausing here for a couple of breaths. Good, either stepping the right foot forward, followed by left, or hopping two feet forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release, bend the knees, coming into chair, katasana. Holding. And immediately folding forward. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, stepping left foot back, or jumping two feet back. Working through your chaturanga, always the option to go straight to down dog, we'll all end up there in the end. Good, right leg extends up, bringing it forward, coming to warrior one. Back leg will pivot, or back foot pivots. Whoops, not quite that far, almost like warrior two. Hands and heart, or arms extend. Also for stability, arms can be here. What I'm more worried about is that the knee is bent, but not past 90, and that your hips are forward. Taking a deep breath here. Opening up the chest, opening up the heart. Gaze is slightly up without pressing and contracting our neck, right? Good, pivoting this, warrior two. Arms extend, once again, no more than a 90 degree bend in the front. Belly in, pelvis is under. We're gonna add breath and movement here, coming from side angle bend to reverse warrior. So arms gonna find the thigh as the arm reaches over. Lower body stays where it is as the left arm comes up or back, right arm comes up. Good, so we're just moving our torso. I like to think of this as your legs seaweed in a beautiful tropical sea, and you're in the sand, so your lower body's in the sand, it's not moving, but your upper body is just drifting in that beautiful curve. 
be a blue wire. Good, this time come down and hold it. If you want, you can come to the thigh. If you want, you can come all the way to the mat. Opposite arm can extend or reach over, but we don't want to be rounding over. Stay open, shoulder stacking. You can come on a block if that works better. Breathing into that. Pressing up, coming to that reverse warrior again. Good, and then cartwheeling all the way down to the mat, stepping the right foot back, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhaling, pressing back, down dog. Same thing on the other side. Left leg's gonna come up, swing forward, plant down, pivot, coming to your warrior one. Remember, just the one on this side. Hips forward, picking your arm position, checking that your knee is not coming beyond your toes. If your foot's back here, just step it forward. Good, opening up, warrior two. I always have to scooch my foot back on warrior two. You decide, keep that knee over ankle, don't let it fall in. Pelvis under, arms extend. Notice my back is active here. I'm not just like hanging out. Shoulder blades pulling together, shoulders down, arms strong. Working those muscles. Breath with movement, side angle bend. Reverse the warrior. Drifting once again through your beautiful Caribbean Sea. Feet rooted in the white sands, but they're not moving. Go on last time. This time staying in your side angle bend if you want, it can come down to the mat. But again, it's like you're between two panes of glass. Do not round forward, keep that chest open, the back long. Pressing up, reversing the warrior. And then cartwheeling down to the mat, stepping the left foot back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up. Exhale, pressing back, holding here. And then stepping the left foot forward or hopping two feet forward. Inhale, sliding up. Exhale, release, bending the knees. Oops, katasana. Exhale, turn around. Take a breath. One more round. Listen to meditations. Here we go. Utkatasana. Inhale. Chair pose. Ooh. Holding. Pausing. Forward fold. Inhale. Pull up. Back. Exhale. Release. Right foot steps back. Or hopping back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Excellent, rising up, warrior one. Right foot swings forward, plants down, warrior. Inhale. Transition to warrior two. Good, transition to triangle. So we're gonna straighten that leg. I am very fussy about triangle. Reach the front hand forward, reach it, reach it, reach it. You're leaning into it. When you can't reach any further, let that arm go. Whatever it is, it's fine. It doesn't need to reach the floor. And then extend the arm up. It's best if this arm is free. You're working your core more that way. If you put your hand here, you can feel that your belly stops working. You really have to support yourself. You wanna make it harder. Bring the right arm in front, left arm overhead. Can you hold it here for three, for two, for one, press up. Open that up, reversing your triangle. Good, one more time, we're gonna come into triangle. Letting that arm go, arm comes up. Optional here, half moon posture. It's easier to bend the front knee here. You might even want a block in front of you. And you're going to come up, opening to the side, leg about hip height, hand can be on the block if you want, hand can be on the floor, pausing here. Can you come up into warrior one, or warrior two rather, sorry, warrior two, there we're dressed the two. Cartwheel down to the mat, right foot steps back, exhale, chatter on the mat. Rising up, pressing back, downward facing dog. Left side, leg comes up, warrior one. Planting that down, rising up. Warrior two, opening it to the side. Good, 
triangle, extend the leg, hinging forward, reaching, 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 let that left arm go, let the right arm come up. Just like side angle bend, you're between two panes of glass. Reversing your triangle, rising up. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot something. Right arm comes overhead, how can I forget your ab move? Extend the left arm out in front, holding here for three, for two, for one. Now pressing up, reverse that triangle all the way through the ribs. Good, coming back to your triangle, hinging forward, reaching down, hand finds the mat, and then coming to your half moon here. So knee bends, I believe we'll back so it'll come out of frame, and then stepping up, extending the leg, extending the arm, open the chest towards the wall, and then warrior two, placing that foot down, extending long, cartwheeling over, step the left foot back, exhale, chaturanga, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog, good, dropping down to knees, sitting back on your heels in child's pose, releasing your head to the world, and taking a couple of breaths, coming back up to your downward facing dog, Hopping forward, hands and feet between your hands, releasing your head, sliding halfway up, releasing down, coming into chair. Holding here. And then forward fold, sliding up halfway. Exhale, release, stepping left foot back or hopping two feet back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, press back. One last leg uh, breath with movement here. Extend the right leg up, this time coming outside the leg. So to the right elbow. And kick back up. Right foot, right elbow. And extend. And three. And two. Last one. Come up, extend. Place that foot down, separate the feet, reach the left hand back towards the right half or right ankle for a down dog twist. Release the hands, step the feet together, left leg comes up, comes to the outside elbow and back. Left knee to left elbow and back. And three. The last one, step that foot down, separate the feet, and now reach the right hand back to the left calf or the left ankle for down dog twist on the side. Good, release that hand down, bring the feet back together, and then come into a plank position from here. Hands under shoulders. Good, pressing back up to down dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale down. Inhale to plank. Exhale down bow. This time coming to plank, we're going to hold it. Your option from plank is to drop down to knees. If this bothers your wrists, you can come to forearms. Belly button pulling in. Same thing here. We don't want to arch our back and drop our hips. Glutes are contracting. Belly button's contracting. Can you lift your right leg? Can you lift and tap? Five, four, three, two, one, and plant it down. Left leg lifts up for five, four, three, two, one, and plant it down. Good, dropping to knees, sitting back on your heels, giving yourself a breath or two in child's pose. There's more planks to come. I know you're super excited about that. We're going to come plank to side plank. So, your options are to do regular plank on your knees, on your toes. You can come down to forearms and knees, forearms and toes. And we're going to transition to the side. Same thing, you can be forearm and knee, or you can be hand and knee. 
knee or hand and toes. Okay, your decision. So, come on up. Find your plank. So many planks. So we're gonna hold this for five, four, three, two, right hand, right foot, or forearm, or knee, whatever you're doing. Left arm can extend if you wish. If you'd like an added challenge, you can lift that leg. We're gonna hold it for five, four, three, two, one. If the leg is lifted, lower it, and then we're gonna twist. We're gonna twist the left arm under and come up. And four. You could always drop down to the knee. You could also stagger the feet so both feet are on the floor. And two. And one. Kind of lost track, but I did an extra one there. Bend the right knee, everybody. If it's not already there, plant it down. Left leg extends. Lift the left leg to hip height. And pulse it up. 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 Lifting towards the sky. Little teeny movements. And pulse. And then circles forward. And reverse the circles. And pause. Press yourself up. We're going to come to gate posture. So you're on your knee with your opposite leg extended. That arm's going to drop down without pressing on your leg. You can grab a block. Keep talking about blocks and not using them. You can bring a block. And then we're going to arch over to that side. You can also just let the arm dangle. I just don't want to see this. I mean, I can't see it. You could do it if you wanted to. But I prefer you not to because I don't want to you to hurt your knees. Good. Bring yourself up. Cartwheel over. We're going to go right to the other side. You pick your version of plank. Holding it for five, four, three, two, and one. Transitioning to your side plank. Option to lift the leg. Option not. Option to have the knees for three, for two, for one, and then twist. Five, and four, and three, and two, last one, good, bringing the knee down to the mat, if it wasn't there already, pressing yourself up, and coming to gate on this side, again, block is an option. Let the head go. 
Let the back go. Take a couple breaths, maybe swing, maybe twist. Get the hands to the floor, put one knee down, put the other knee down. And then spin the legs front so you can see. Extend the legs out. Ashmore's Nasta, deep and up. Exhale, legs forward. Inhale, lift. 
Exhale, release. Inhale to lift. Exhale, release. And this time, let the legs drop down to the right and keeping them there. I like to take my hand on my thigh. Give it a twist. Take a couple breaths. Looking over the opposite shoulder, both shoulders in that. You can, of course, extend your arms. There's so many variations of this twist. Bring the legs up to center, over to the other side. Looking out over that shoulder, maybe pulling that knee across. Okay, coming back to center, knees into the chest. Your option for your inversion, you can grab a block and come to a supported bridge. You can bring this to the low level, the medium level, or the high level. You can put the block here and extend legs. So either of those are good for people with blood pressure issues, menstruating women, uh, pregnant women. Uh, less or more intense rather is to come over into a plow. And the most intense is going to be to come to shoulder stand. So you pick. If you're working in shoulder stand, you can do some leg lifts here, lowering and bringing up. Kind of continuing to work our abdominal muscles, as well as stretching our legs, making sure you do both sides. And if your legs are lifted either in shoulder stand or with the leg on the feet on the block, or fixing the block rather, you can open your legs. Squeeze them together. Again, if you're in shoulder stand or if your hips are on the block, you can do some little crisscrosses here. Working the inner thighs. Good. If your legs are in shoulder stand, go ahead and lower them back into plow. Everyone in plow, go ahead and roll yourself down. You guys on the blocks can stay there. Those of you down here on the mat, coming up into fish. So your hands are reaching long under your body towards your heels. Shoulders roll under, chest comes up, let the head find the mat. If your head doesn't find the mat, grab a block and put your head on the block. You don't want your head hanging in space. Those of you on the block, go ahead and pull the block out from under you. Everybody release down, finding happy baby. Hands grabbing hold of feet, keeping yourself correct. Good, and then just coming to your final savasana. Legs extended, arms by your side, chin towards chest, closing your eyes, and letting your body melt into the mat. Beginning to move your small muscles again, wiggling fingers, wiggling toes, rolling wrists, and rolling ankles. Moving your head from side to side. Rolling yourself over onto your right hand side, drawing yourself up into the fetal position. Giving yourself a little hug and thanking yourself for your practice today. And then using your hands, you can press yourself up, keeping your eyes closed if you're comfortable doing so, or opening your eyes if you prefer. Sitting up tall in a cross-legged position. From here, just let your head drop down to the left, stretching to the right. Up through center, let it release down to the opposite side. Back up to center, turning and looking over one shoulder, over the other shoulder. A couple times. Back to center. 
center. Deep inhale. Lift the arms up, press the palms together. Exhale, bring them back down to your heart. Again, inhale. Like you're gathering a big ball of energy and exhale to your heart. One last time. Exhale. Leaving your hands and your arms here, just take a deep breath. Open your mouth and let it go. Inhale. And as you exhale, bowing forward, giving thanks to your practice, giving thanks to your body and all that it does, giving thanks to your mind. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Monica. This is Unity Yoga and Pilates, and I'm hoping to bring you more videos soon. Again, apologize for the kind of ambient noise going on outside, but that's what I have here, so that's what we're using. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much.